Have you ever gone on a road trip without knowing where you were going? A time when you just got in the car, turned the key, and left? I have. People say travel is about the journey, not the destination. But in my case, I'm just bad at planning and prefer flying by the seat of my pants. Sorry to spoil your fantasy. But I digress. Hi, I'm Alex, a solo female traveler from the United States. I'm pretty bad at sticking to plans. I'm really good at making things up as I go along. And in 2019, I proved both of those while road tripping down one of the most epic routes in Russian Siberia, the Chusky Tract. If you're like, hold up, what and where is the Chusky Tract? No worries, I didn't know either. The Chusky Tract is a road stretching from the capital city of Siberia, Novosibirsk, all the way down to the Mongolian border. Russians started using it as a trade route with Mongolia in the late 1700s, and it's since evolved into a paved highway almost a thousand kilometers long. But I admit, I wasn't there for the history. I was just there because a couch surfer told me it was one of the most beautiful regions in all of Siberia. Altai. The Altai is this swath of mountainous steppe across Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and China. Though I'd say Altai is a bit off the beaten track for the average foreign tourist in Russia, it's still popular with Russians in summer. But if you're an antisocial cave troll like me, don't worry. Altai is so vast and remote that you can easily get away from people for hours or days at a time. Epic Nature Sans People is pretty much the only motivation I need. And I was already traveling in Siberia anyway. So, I took a train to Novosibirsk, spent a few days buying supplies and getting some basic pointers from my couch surfing host's father. Or at least I tried. Moiruski Ojin Ploha. Rented a tiny little Lada with <clears throat> possibly fabricated car insurance from my host. Then started heading south with no real destination in mind. So began my solo road trip through Altai. So this is day one. I am about to road trip by myself. I'm probably gonna drive like 1,500 miles, or like, I forget how many kilometers that is. Man, I'm bad at this conversion. Basically, my host told me that it was super pretty and I should go check it out, so bitches, let's roll. It might sound crazy, but I gotta say, having no destination in mind was pretty ideal. See, the Chusky Tract is pretty straightforward. It's hard to get really lost. After a certain point, it's basically the only major paved road. There's plenty of tourist infrastructure for the first 500-ish kilometers to gorno Altaisk city. You know, guest houses, restaurants, souvenir shops, that kind of stuff. But after that, it starts to clear out. Towns in Altai might have a few guest houses, restaurants, shops, but that's about it. Not that you really need anything else. After heading out, I decided to aim for the southern shores of Altai's biggest lake, Teletskaya, or Altenkol in the local language, which is also called Altai. The northern tip of the lengthy lake is popular with Russian tourists in summer, so my couch surfing host advised me to head south instead. Getting to Teletskaya's southern tip requires either hours of off-road driving away from the Chusky Tract, or an expensive ferry across the lake, which ends up deterring everyone except the most determined tourists. I still have like two more hours to go until the lake that I was aiming for today, because these roads are just like total shit. Challenge accepted. 
I'll admit, the little lot I had was not exactly suited for off-road driving. But even then, the dirt roads to southern Tuletsky are mostly manageable, even for crappy little cars. Aside from the steep and sandy switchbacks of Katuyarik Pass, that is. Part of the drive I'm really afraid of, this steep as fuck switchback. The first part's the steepest, so if I can make it up that, I'm okay, otherwise... Don't let Katuyarik be a deal breaker, though. So if you can't drive your Very car up this mountain, you can drive it up this way. Locals with tractors are usually on hand to tow cars back up to the top when all else fails. For a fee, of course. With a bit of patience, my little car managed to make it both down and up the pass without much issue. That was probably the most terrifying road I've ever driven a car on. However, I did it. I'm totally treating myself to an ice cream right now because I'm sweating buckets from just like panic and nerves. <sighs> I deserve it. Also, the car is overheating, so... Unluckily, thanks to a bit of impatience, I got stuck a few hours later anyway. Right before reaching the lake. Oops. On the bright side, mere minutes after stepping out to assess the situation, an older Russian couple with a pickup towed my car out. You could read. Oh, yeah. Ah. And a kind <laughs> local man navigated it through the mud minefield. <laughs> to be honest, Lake Tuletsky was a bit disappointing. So I've arrived in Lake Tuletsky after the most arduous drive of this whole trip so far. Um, I got super stuck in the mud and had to be rescued back there. I got to the beach, saw that there's, like, for me, a massive shitload of people here. So I tried to turn around and leave and got stuck in the sand and had to be pushed out by a man who was kind enough to help me and just... Yeah. But it was like an hour until sunset. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm not ready to fight the sand and the mud again, so like, fuck it, I'm just gonna camp here for a day. It is pretty beautiful. Though it was beautiful, the shores were packed with Russian tourists, by my standards anyway. The water was way too cold to swim. I went in and like all of the muscles in my legs just seized up completely. And I couldn't find any hiking trails along the southern shore. Hm. I did spend one night on the lake shore, but hanging around families and friends having fun is kind of depressing as a solo traveler. Despite driving for days to reach Lake Tuletsky, I packed up, said my goodbyes, what? What? and copious <laughs> thanks oh, to my local yes, savior, yes. Yep, and drove off to explore other, emptier areas instead. An excellent idea, I must say. Plans be damned. I to go on a little hike this morning. I ended up stumbling across this path that goes up the mountain, and wow, look at this. For days, I ran on impulse alone. I drove down random dirt roads, wandered along tempting mountain paths, and camped near glassy lakes and streams so clean you could drink from them. Though you should prob still purify the water, just in case. Out of curiosity, I even drove all the way to Tashanta. You know, the border town where the Chusky Tract ends and Mongolia begins. It wasn't part of the plan, but right now I'm driving to the end of the Chusky Tract. Um, the hitchhikers that I picked up the other day said that the mountain scenery along the last bit of the track towards the Mongolian border is super beautiful and I have time, so I might as well go check it out and wow, they're right. It was Kind of a hike. And did get a bit dull by the end. I'm officially beginning my journey back to Novosibirsk on this straight as fuck empty road. But 
At least now I can say I've driven the entirety of the Chewski tract. And that's all that really matters when we're traveling, right? <laughs> Honestly though, after road tripping the entirety of the Chewski tract, and getting purposely lost on many a dirt road along the way, I'm pretty down with saying Altai was one of the most gorgeous road trips I've ever taken. And trust me, I've road tripped a lot. So if you're trying to have an epic Siberian adventure, and aren't afraid of getting a little dusty and dirty, well, Altai can do you no wrong. Enjoyed my adventures through Altai? Show it some love, and don't forget to subscribe for more travel stories from Off the Beaten Track.